Hello everyone, welcome to Screencast SC10120. In today's screencast, we are going to be creating device profiles. So let's get started. Unlike RF domains, which are hardware independent, device profiles are hardware specific. The primary reason for this is because device profiles give the admin the capability to configure parameters such as radio and interfaces, which could be very different for different types of hardware. It enables the admin to have ease of management. Assume you have thousands and thousands of APs in your network. By just having one single profile, you could configure all of them. Even if you had a few APs that needed a different profile, you could create a couple of profiles and still be able to manage thousands of access points in a network. Common parameters like wireless LAN mappings, clustering, firewall policies, all can be created in one single profile and then pushed out to multiple devices. Just like the RF domains, every single device is required to have a si one single profile. In the factory default state, the RFS switch will have different profiles for different types of hardware, for example, the 650 and the AP7131. In our topology today, we are going to be creating two profiles, profile for site 1 and profile for site 2. The only difference between these two profiles is going to be the wireless LAN mappings. Site 1 is going to support all the three wireless LANs, which is going to be the corporate wireless LAN, the guest wireless LAN, and the consultant wireless LAN. In case of Site 2, the admin has decided to provide no guest access, and therefore we will not be mapping this wireless LAN, which essentially means that any AP coming from Site 2 will only beacon with the consultant VLAN and the corporate VLAN. Any AP coming from Site 1 will beacon with all the three wireless LANs, which is the corporate, the guest, and the consultant. There are three configuration parameters we will add to our new profile. The first one would be mapping a bridging policy. This bridging policy was created in our previous screencast. Secondly, we will define VLANs on the AP so that the AP can route packets for the corporate wireless LAN appropriately. And last, we will map our wireless LANs to the radio. Let's log into the switch and create our new profiles. I have loaded the config from our previous screencast SC10100. The username is admin and the password is symbol. To create our new profiles, we will navigate to configuration and profiles. As seen, by default, there are profiles on the RFS 7000. Whenever an AP650 or an AP731 is plugged into the network, they would automatically get a profile from the 7K. We're going to create our own profiles. Let's call the first profile as profile underscore site one. This is going to be for site one. Uh, it's going to be for AP7131 since that's the uh, AP I have in my network. Uh, the bridging policy is going to be default. Let's go and check what was our bridging policy that we created in the previous screencast. We've defined uh, two VLANs as extended, which is our guest and the consultant VLAN. And uh, we've enabled wireless to wired local bridging, which is required for uh, locally bridging the corporate wireless LAN packets. Uh, let's click on OK. We now want to create our VLANs. Let's go to Virtual Interfaces, click on Add. The first VLAN we'll add is going to be VLAN 1. Let's just call it Management. We are going to uh, get an IP address using DHCP. Click on OK. And exit out of there. Uh, another VLAN we need to create is VLAN 9, which is going to be our uh, corporate VLAN. Now, you just got to be a bit careful here. As you can see, the VLAN ID default here shows up as 1. So any edits you make here would automatically overwrite the VLAN 1 that we already created. So you want to ensure that you change the VLAN ID to 9. Let's call that as corp. And again, we will choose to get an IP address via DHCP. Let's click OK and exit. Comment our changes and save them. Essentially, we have created two VLANs, VLAN 1 and VLAN 9. We have uh, made sure they both are up. We have made sure that they get an IP address using DHCP. Once the APs adopt on the RFS switch, these VLAN configs would be pushed out to the AP. Next, we want to go ahead and map these uh, VLANs onto our GIGI1 port. So we will go to Ethernet ports, click on GE1, click Edit. We're going to make this port a trunk port going to make sure the native VLAN is set to 1. The allowed VLANs are going to be 1 and 9. Let's click OK and let's exit from here. 
Again, you got to ensure that once the AP adopts and this config is pushed onto the AP, the AP can communicate back with the controller, which essentially means you need to configure your wired switch, which could be a Cisco or an HP or a Juniper, to have the right trunking. To map our wireless LANs to the radio, we will navigate to the radios button on the left, click on radio 1, click on edit, navigate to wireless LAN mapping. As you can see, right now we have three wireless LANs and they're not mapped to the radio. So let's go ahead and map uh, all the three wireless LANs since site 1 is going to be supporting all our wireless LANs. Click on OK, click on exit. Let's go to radio 2, click on edit, do the same thing apply all our wireless LANs uh, to the 11A radio, click on OK, click on Exit, commit our changes, and save it. Any AP that is mapped to profile site 1 will inherit the settings that we have created in this profile. So they'll get all the three wireless LANs and they will get uh, a trunk port with uh, VLAN 1 and 9 mapped to it. Let's create our profile for site 2. Let's click on Add, give the profile a name, the type is going to be AP7031, our bridging policy is going to be default as we had in the previous profile. Let's click OK. The first thing we want to do is again create our VLANs as we did in the uh, for the earlier profile, leave VLAN1, call that management, use DHCP, let's click OK exit out of here, add our corporate VLAN, which is going to be 9, give it a name, use DHCP, OK, exit. Let's go ahead and uh, map our G1 port to have our uh, trunking for 1 and 9 so that uh, the AP can route the packets. Click on OK, exit. Next, we want to map our wireless LANs, go to radios, radio 1, map these two wireless LANs. Now this is the key difference between uh, our profile 1 and profile 2. In profile 2 we're not going to be providing guest access so we're not going to map the guest uh, wireless LAN to the radio. Let's click OK. We do the exact same thing for radio 2. Add the corporate wireless LAN, the consultant and not the guest. Exit. Commit changes and save. We have successfully created two profiles, one for Site 1 and one for Site 2. The only difference between uh, these two profiles is the wireless LAN mapping. Site 1 supports all the three wireless LANs and Site 2 uh, supports only two. Any AP that plugs into the network can be assigned uh, a profile for Site 1 or Site 2. Uh, in the next screencast, we will look at uh, how this is done using adoption policies. The config file for today's screencast can be downloaded from the link seen on your screen. You should now be able to create device-specific profiles. Thank you.